Hey, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I want to take you through building a query loop using external API sources from BricksForge. And what we're going to do is going to be pulling in the data from iTunes search and displaying the artist and the, uh, you know, the album cover as well as an audio player. So I can come here to this search field. And right now we don't see anything on this page, but we can search for whatever we want. Um, I'll just search for, and I like the frighteners, right? And so then it's going to show up and it's going to bring all of the data into the query loop. And we have, um, basically all of their songs here and you can search for other stuff, right? You can do, let's, what do we want to search for? DMX. X going to give it to you, right? All right, there we go. So you can play this song and like, uh, you know, you will turn this down so we don't go deaf, but, uh, so it's going to play that, that music right for you. And, uh, it's just doing this search directly into a bricks forge, uh, pro form. And so this form is then updating the URL and returning query data here. So we're going to go through how to build that from setting up the API to building it in bricks and then implementing the search functionality to pass in dynamic values into the URL. So. That's what we're going to be doing and let's uh let's get started first thing you, you want to do is make sure you get the correct url from the itunes search so you just got to search for like itunes api or itunes search api and that's going to be the first two results here uh either of these should work I, it seems like mostly the same info so i'm just going to click in here and we have some overview stuff of the api you know what to do what's legal with it whatever uh, we'll search, we're going to click on search because we're trying to get to the search API. And this will give us uh, all this info about constructing searches. So this is how you pass in dynamic values into a URL and return the values from that search. Uh, so basically it's pretty simple. Um, there's, there's what's called query parameters. So this is like the base URL, right? Uh, for search. And then and everything after this is like a parameter and key value. And so the way that looks is like you pass in something like uh, the, the search term and then the value of that search term. So it'd be like, you know, the artist, and then this would be like the artist name or something like that. And there's uh, ways to construct it that you can uh, go through that, you know, all kind of are slightly different, but what we're going to be looking at here is the search parameter key of term. And this lets us search for like, two words next to each other um, and be able to just type it in. And it basically replaces the spaces with a plus character, or in our case, it's going to replace it with um, the, you know, whatever the space is for the URL. Uh, but anyway, that lets us just be able to search the uh, API. And so the way this looks, let's just like jump into it. I'll copy this, um, this base URL here. So itunes.apple.com slash search, and we'll go to our brick site. And I've got a brick site here and all you really need is bricks builder and bricks forge to build this. Uh, so I'm going to go to bricks forge and I'll go to my API query builder and I'm going to make a new query. All right. And we'll call this iTunes. All right. And we're going to paste that URL right there. Okay. And we can come down to the query parameters then and, and put term, uh, is it term or terms? Just term singular. So term, and then we can put in something here um, and you can, you, you have to actually encode this correctly. So like we'll do Jack plus Johnson, like they have in the example. And, um, and then we'll go ahead and fetch that. And it's going to fetch that. And we have, um, I don't know. It looks like we have some stuff that doesn't look like it's Jack Johnson related. Um, let's try like, I don't know, Beatles. And sometimes you got to clear the cache and then fetch again. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, so that's like George Harrison. Okay, so I mean, this is definitely Beetle related stuff, right? So it is working, it is returning values. And um, now let's just jump over and get this data into Bricks, and then we'll come back here and set up our dynamic URL. And actually, before we do that, what we'll do is set our root path here. And so we can, instead of getting this like result count, which we don't, we don't really need, I can just type in results and clear the cache and fetch again. And then we'll, we'll just have a clean uh, array there uh, of list items. All right. So let's jump over to our pages and let's just make a new page and we'll call this iTunes. 
publish this and we're just going to set up an easy query builder in bricks so we just at least see some data coming through. Um, and yeah. All right, so let's add a section and then let's just add a block and this will be like the, I don't know, track name. Um, and then within that, we're going to put in, let's see, what do we want? We wanted the album cover, track name, artist, an album, and an audio player. Okay, so let's just build that. Let's just put the, um, I don't know, we'll just call this header and we'll call this uh, footer. And in our header, we're gonna put an image. We're gonna put in, I guess, a heading, a text, and another basic text. This will be the artist. This will be the album. This will be the song name. And this will be album cover. All right. And then I'm also just gonna group these together so that we have all of these together. And then on this header, I could just uh, put in a quick, quick grid of like a, a one, three, maybe. Yeah. Um, just so we have the album covered. It's kind of small. We don't want it to blow out and be too big. Let's just make sure that's also like a hundred percent. And I'm not doing like classes or anything for this. Uh, okay. So now that we have that, what we need to do is come back to our dashboard here. Uh, actually, we don't really need to, we can just, we can just set up a query. So on this guy here, we're going to query loop and we're going to select our iTunes uh, query that we just built uh, in the Bricks Forge API builder. All right. So again, everything's going to kind of disappear there and I'm not really sure exactly why that happens, but uh, just, you'll see it on the front end in a minute. Now setting up the image URL, right? We've got this custom URL here, not the dynamic one. And we'll come down to iTunes and we have it's artwork. Yeah. Probably artwork. And then we'll come down to our uh, song name and I'm just going to also just make this a little smaller for now. It's not semantically correct, but whatever. Uh, and this is a nice little panel from advanced themer, right? So I can come here and just select, select the, um, track name. Where's track name. Am I crazy? Track name. There it is. And then for the artist, we'll get rid of the static text and go back and do the, I don't know, can I just type? Yeah, artist name. And for the album, I think this is uh, one of the things you need to look at with the API. Um, I believe it's called collection name. They call that uh, albums or collections there. And let's just also decrease the spacing here. And this guy can be uh, a little bit lighter there. Uh, okay. So we're looking pretty good here. Let's um, let's just put a little more styling on this so we can kind of see stuff. So I'll just put a little padding in here and put a little background color. Uh, yeah. So let's save that. And let's just also, you know, I don't know, put a little brickboard radius on there. Why not? All right, so let's look at this on the front end. And already that well, we're seeing all of our stuff show up here, right? So let's go back. Uh, I forgot to put a grid on here. Just do like an auto grid of three and refresh this. And it's already looking pretty good. So we have our dynamic, uh, I guess this is the artist name, right? And the track name and the uh, album cover, right? So we still need to get the audio player and I'm gonna put that in the footer here. And if you go up to Bricks Elements, there is an audio player element and it does let you pass in dynamic data and so i thought this would work if i go to i think it's the preview preview url and just really quick i'll just sidestep here the reason i know that is first of all i mean i've once you've worked with some apis you kind of start to pick up some patterns but if i go back to our bricks forge uh settings here and i go to our api query builder and I look at this, um, I can see here, uh, this is like one track, right? So I can see 
Um, the so I know artist URL was or like what is it collection artwork URL. Sorry, that's the artwork of the track because if you come over here, it's a little wonky here. That one's a JPEG file, and then um, the the uh, preview. Where's the preview URL right here? That one I can see ends in an MP4, so I know that's a you know video or audio track, right? So that's that's how I know that that's what I wanted to get into the builder um, for the preview URL. But I'll refresh this, and you'll see it doesn't actually work. Uh, let's go back here. We don't have an audio player, so what I did actually is delete this and then add another div and just call this like audio. And on the HTML element, I set it from div to custom and then typed in audio. And then what that lets you do is go to your style tab and start passing in attributes. So we can pass in like um, controls. Uh, I don't even know if you need to give a value. It doesn't look like it because it just shows up. And then we just pass in the, the SRC or the source value of the URL. And I should be able to select this and go to uh, preview URL. Okay, <clears throat> so let's save that. Let's go to the front end. And that seems to be working, right? So uh, we can go back to well, let's just let's just play one of these, right? Uh, except it's a Beatles song. I don't want to get demonetized, guys. I mean, it's it's annoying these these music conglomerates. Uh, let's let's oops, let's go pick the good old uh, We'll change this in the URL structure here. So I'll just put in another great band here and I'll refresh and it should change, right? It's yeah. So now we're getting the, the, the query term, right? From that example, right? So and then now our audio player, I'll turn this down. Gotta find a way. Great. It works. We can hear it. That is the correct song. And so it's pulling that in from every uh, thing on this. Okay. So that is how you pass in a sort of a static value to the URL and get the query. So if you wanted to just, you know, list a bunch of song names and albums that you uh, know in particular, you can use the search API from iTunes to kind of find that data uh, to use a search, right? To pass that data in, you can query that no problem. Now let's take it one step further and use a pro form from BricksForge to actually pass in dynamic data. Uh, to the URL so that the user can type in whatever they want to search, right? And it will return that data. All right, so in order to pass in a dynamic value to the URL, we're actually going to come back to our BricksForge API builder and we're going to delete this query parameter and we're going to put it in the URL itself. And so the way to do that is just do question mark and then term equals and we're going to pass in a colon here and this will be able to then be used as a dynamic value so colon you can name this i think whatever you'd want so you could name it id uh you could name it um you know term something like that why don't we just call it term because then it's consistent with the actual api all right so now we can type in uh we can type in a value here and we can save that and Let's see if what that looks like on the front end. So on the front end, we actually don't see anything anymore on our iTunes page, but if we come up to the URL here and we delete that backslash and type in something like term equals, yeah, Beatles, um, this will now work, right? So now it is a dynamically working URL, so I can delete this and do, um, again, like lead plus Zeppelin, I guess. I think you need to type it in with the plus like that. All right, and then it's going to show Led Zeppelin. So it is working, but what we, what we need to do is create a form so that the user can actually fill it out and understand like what's going on. All right, so let's do that. Let's jump back to our builder here, and um, let's go up to the elements here. And I think I have Pro Forms. Do I? Yeah, so don't worry about all these different options here. I'm just going to add a simple Pro Form and bring that up to the top here. And probably just, I don't know, wrap this in a, a, a container real quick. So we have something there. Um, and 
what we have here is a bunch of settings uh, over here, but we're first going to just delete some of these things. We only, we don't need an email or text area. We just need the text itself. And we actually, what we're going to call this is uh, search for artists, album, songs, etc. All right. And good. So that um, lets us have a form that the user can fill out. And there's a submit button that should submit the form. So how do we get this connected up? So probably the easiest way to do that is to set up a redirect as an action. So what we need to do is set up uh, an action. We go up to our pro form here in the wrapper and um, <clears throat> there's different actions you can do like when a user submits a form, right? Um, as far as I know, there isn't just like a search or user input field. Uh, there's all kinds of different things here. There might be a way to do this differently, but this is just the way that I was setting it up. Um, and so I'm going to set a redirect because what we wanted to do is redirect to the page with that correct term on it. So I'll set that up and I'll delete the email action as well. And then once you select redirect, there's another bo box that shows up down here. And what we're going to do is, um, so what we're going to do is pass in a, a URL to the existing URL. So that's going to be everything with the, with the question mark after it. So all the query parameters that you want to pass in, this is how you would do that to the URL. So we'll do term and then equals. And then BricksForge has this nice little pro forms panel. And like, if you click that, that brings up all the functions and available uh, sort of variables like JavaScript variables to use. And so I can click that. And oh, I've, it's actually deleted the other stuff here, but actually I want that to be the value. So again, I'll do question mark term equals, and that should redirect to the correct um, page based on whatever the user types in. All right, so um, let's also just get rid of this uh, hideous uh, yellow here. Let's just make that, oops. Style that up and let's make the typography white. Okay, so now that we have that, let's go look at the front end. And right now it's set to term equals Led Zeppelin. Let's come up here and do like, um, I don't know, gorillas. Submit that and voila. Now it's passed that term value into the URL and we can search whatever we want, right? So, you know, you want to search for Taylor Swift. We're going to search for Taylor Swift. And so that one has a space in it. And you can see here up in the URL, it's like correctly put this, um, uh, what is this percentage sign two zero for the space. And it has returned the correct values based on the search. And that's pretty much the gist of this tutorial. It's a way to get dynamic data from one source uh, on, onto another source and then update that source with the user input. Um, so anything you want to search for, you got it. As long as it's in that iTunes database, you can search here and display it directly on your page. Now there's all kinds of things you can do uh, beyond that. You can limit the number of options here. You can put an infinite scroll. There's all kinds of possibilities, but hopefully this gives you an idea of how to Think about dynamic data. Think about how to use external libraries that don't have to exist within your WordPress database. Um, it should give you a bit of a head start beyond other WordPress developers to understand and know and be able to implement this kind of stuff. So thanks for watching and we'll see you around. Thanks.